Well hi and welcome to Izzy's Crafty Bees. It's Monday the 1st of March 2022 and I'm here live on YouTube to give you a, a demonstration of two beautiful cards made with the Ranunculus Romance stamp set by Stampin' Up and it's new in our January to June uh, mini catalogue. Before I start, I'll just say hello and welcome. I'm Izzy Shashinsky and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK in North Nottinghamshire. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to crack on. Before I start with my demonstration, I will just um, bring you three golden moments from my week, as I always like to do. Just a little bit of positivity. Um, so, in the last week, uh, on Sunday morning I had a lovely walk in the countryside just near to where I live. It was beautiful, it was sunny and warm um, just in the sun. It was quite cold in the easterly wind but it was lovely to see signs of spring popping up all around. I, I spotted some primroses growing near the lake where I live so it was a lovely beautiful walk. We also had visitors, so my dad and my stepmom Jules came to visit on Sunday for an overnight stay and that was lovely. Um, oh hello, I can see somebody's watching. Hi Helen. Please comment, um, I should have said that right at the beginning. If you're watching me live, you can use the comments um, and I will try and reflect on those comments afterwards. I'm pretty new to broadcasting live via YouTube, although I have been doing live demonstrations of, over on my Facebook page for the last couple of years. So the tech um, with the YouTube live broadcasting is something I'm just getting used to. So just finding my way around what buttons and what the screen looks like. So please do feel free to comment through the, um, through the broadcast. So yeah, um, and my last golden moment was I actually managed to successfully cook something that was really lovely and everybody enjoyed it. So that was quite a golden moment for me. Um, I am not a foodie. I love food. I don't mind cooking. I can cook, but it's not my favourite uh, pastime. You won't find me talking about the kitchen being the heart of the home. The stamping craft room is the heart of the home. Just saying. <laughs> so yeah, I successfully made um, from scratch uh, steak and ale pie and everybody loved it. So fab. Okay, right. I'm going to spin the camera around. So bear with me with some of this spinny stuff and the moving stuff while we get organised. Let's have a look. And we'll just get that camera straight. Um, let's see. Just try and make sure that that's reasonably straight and I can see my grid sheet. So that's fab. So yeah, um, I'm going to be using or focusing mainly on this beautiful stamp set, Ranunculus Romance. And it's from the mini catalogue. Let me just grab that so you know what the, which mini catalogue. So it's the January to June 2022 catalogue. And the Ranunculus Romance stamp set is... Go. on page 54 and it comes as a bundle now I didn't get the dies I actually um, fortunately because I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator I actually qualified to get a free stamp set or a free item so I ordered the stamp set because I absolutely love the imagery it's just really my style and I didn't buy the dies but I have decided I'm going to buy the dies for definite on my next demonstrator order um, so yeah, the stamp set is item number 157968 and that's £22 and it's a cling set with 10 stamps in the set. Mainly imagery, there are three, um, one, two, three, four sentiments in there, um, but I'm pairing it up as well with the Quiet Meadow uh, bundle. Now I'm only using one image from the Quiet Meadow stamp set and that's this splatter and to be honest, I could have used a pen to make splatters for this card. It's very subtle, so to be fair, um, I didn't really need to. But I have used the dies from the Quiet Meadow, Meadow bundle, which I'm just going to highlight. Let's just do this right up front. Let's go through the products and then I can get on with crafting. So the Quiet Meadow 
bundle is in the annual catalogue um may to april 22 may 21 to april 22 so it's coming towards the end of this catalogue and the quiet meadow bundle is actually highlighted on page 160 i'm going to be using the dies now during the whole of march that bundle is actually 49 pounds 50 in the catalogue full price but during the whole of march there is a special offer and the quiet meadow bundle is part of that special offer and there is 20 percent off so it's 44 pounds so i just wanted to highlight that i just want to whiz through a few other products that i'm going to use so in the um paper and cardstock something that may have that you may have overlooked in the annual catalog is our linen speciality paper and i'm going to show you how i've stamped on that linen paper and made the tag for this card and that's on page 136 and it's five pounds fifty for you get two 12 inch by 12 inch sheets and they do go a long way i'm also going to use from our embellishment section two of the sort of special embellishments i'm going to use this paper lattice and i'm also going to use um, a little gold leaf from the expressions in ink ephemera pack they're really handy you actually get um 10 of the lattices in the pack and this ephemera pack i have had since the beginning of the catalogue and i've still not used it all up so i'll show you that when we start making the cards i'm also going to use um the tasteful textile 3d embossing folder and that's on page 155 in the annual catalogue so quite a few bits and pieces and i just wanted to share those with you before we start and as always, right at the beginning, I will say um, it's so just a date check. It's the 1st of March 2022. Obviously, this video will be saved. This live will be saved as a video on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching on catch up or playback at a later date, this host code may not be valid. So always check my um, Facebook feed or my Instagram feed for the latest host code. If you're ordering from me online, you can shop or join my team and please be sure to use the host code when prompted or when you're placing your order every order over 20 pounds in the uk um will qualify for me to send you a free gift there is no option for you to enter that on on your order but i will know you've placed an order with me and as a thank you i will send you separately in the in the post a surprise free gift from me so please if you've used the host code i can do that Okay, so let's get on. I'm going to take a seat so I won't be looking at comments for a little while while I just sit down and do some crafting. So I'm going to start with this card. It's the simpler card of the two. This one has some technique in it, but it has less technique perhaps than this one. So I'm going to pop this one to one side and I'm just going to reach for all my prepped bits and pieces for this card. So here we go. I've used very vanilla thick cardstock to make my card blank or my card base. So that's just half a sheet of A4, scored and folded at ten and a half centimetres. I've then cut myself a piece of magenta madness cardstock i really wanted this bright pop of pink with these neutral tones i thought i'd go for something really nice and bright now remember magenta madness is one of our in colors which is one of our trend colors we have um two um color groups that last each one lasts two years so magenta madness will sadly be leaving us um, at the end of the annual catalog this year will be replaced by some more trend colors this layer i have cut to 14 centimeters by nine and a half so i've just reduced the size of the front of my card base by a centimeter all round i've also cut myself a piece of very vanilla cardstock just the regular cardstock not the thick and I, again, I've reduced that by one centimetre all around. So that piece will measure 13 centimetres by eight and a half centimetres. And that's the layer I'm going to do my decoration on. I've got myself a scrap of very vanilla from my scrap box. And I'm going to use that for the sentiment on this beautiful die cut label. 
So the first thing I want to do actually is I'm going to do, oh, I've also got a scrap of, sorry, I've also got a little scrap of early espresso um, cardstock and I'm going to die cut these little leaves. So the first thing I'm going to do actually before I even wet a stamp is bring in my stamping cut and emboss machine and I'm going to emboss the magenta madness layer and I'm going to die cut the label and I'm going to die cut the leaves for the embellishment. I think I'm just going to double check though. I think I might just stamp just for you on here because um, the stamps I'm using are clear mount, cling mount. Um, they're a red rubber, so I need to be careful about my positioning. So I'm going to take early espresso ink and I'm just going to tap, tap, tap and I'm going to stamp just for you right in the centre of that piece of um, very vanilla and today I'm using very vanilla cardstock as a change from our basic white just for a change I feel that very vanilla gets overlooked quite often and it's such a shame it's a nice soft colour especially for uh, vintage style stamp sets and vintage style imagery I think it's really lovely to so I'm using the meadow die so it's really lovely to use very vanilla for that softer look and I've chosen this big die so it's quite a large leaf die and I'm going to actually die cut that in the early espresso and then I'm going to just snip down the leaves and use just portions of the leaves for decoration and I'm going to use this fancy label so I'll just pop those to one side and let's bring in the big stamping cut and emboss machine We'll do the die cutting first and I can see I've got bits of cardstock on my plate there left from another project so we'll just tidy that up and we'll pop position the um, label across the sentiment now I'm looking for the bottom of the J and the bottom of the Y to be nice and straight and I'm also going to just put a little tiny piece of washi tape to hold that steady and the reason I'm doing that is because this die has been used several times and it's already sort of created a bit of a curve in the die. When I just pop it down, you can see it kind of just spins or flips about a bit. And when I pop the top plate on, what I don't want to happen is for that die to actually move once I've taken time to line it up. So I'm just going to hold that and just pop a bit of washi tape. And that should just hold it a bit a bit still. I'm going to pop my early espresso and that leaf across that scrap. Let's pop the top plate on and wind the whole lot through the machine. Just lift that machine forward so I can get that out the other side. And here we are, we've got our lovely fern leaf that's really delicate and beautiful and we've also got our gorgeous sentiment on that pretty label ready to go so I'm just going to pop the dies that I've used to one side so I don't lose them pop my scraps in the bin now I can actually just move those out of the way pop my machine back in view now I'm going to clear away my cutting plates and plate um, number two and I'm going to bring in so I've got platform number one and plate number four and I'm going to use the embossing folder tasteful textile with that piece of magenta madness cardstock just close that through always with the hinge side forwards to go through the rollers first and I always remember to put the stamping up label uppermost and we can wind that sandwich through I'll just move my machine a little bit further forward now did you all bring your packed lunch or a drink with you to watch today I've got a cup of tea here I just finished I've had such a busy morning I've been um, all 
already up and out into town got my supermarket shopping done and back home had something to eat got myself organized so here we are so here's that lovely it's a very subtle embossed pattern but it just adds some softness and some texture to what i think is quite a feminine sort of romantic um, vintage style card and it just adds that little bit of texture even though we can't see a great deal of it behind that layer I still think it adds that extra interest and embossing folders are a really nice easy way of getting that texture onto your projects now if you really like the distressed and um, vintage look you could do some distressing to the corners you could do some tearing you could do the same with this lab i wanted to keep this one clean and simple and um the next one to have a little bit more technique now i'm going to use the um new layering masks to make this patterned center and the way i'm going to do that i've taken some scrap card just a piece of scrap card and I've used my layering circle dies to cut the largest circle. Now a little tip, because once I've popped that over the top I've lost my layer underneath so I'm not quite sure whether it's right in the middle or not. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it pretty much by eye actually, I'm going to use the cross on my grid sheet. I could count it. I'm going to just do it pretty much by eye. I'm thinking that that looks fairly central. I'm then going to just, because I can still see the cross, let's just, let's just count it. So I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and a half. So we're just going to move that that way a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is, using a pen, I'm going to just draw a line up so I can tell where the edge of my card is and I'm going to draw a line across. Just a rough, it doesn't have to be dead straight, you don't need a ruler. This is just a quick visual aid using a grid sheet because grid sheets ever so useful like that. And now when I pop my mask on, I can actually just gauge whether I think my mask is in the centre or not. I can see that central line this central line here and I can just look at where these edges because of course this circle may not be dead centre to this piece of scrap and I'm hoping I'm making some kind of sense so if I use this you can use a ruler if I use this as a line and then if I use this ruler as a line I can it might just illustrate what I'm trying to describe more carefully All right there so I can see that this circle needs to come this way a little bit so that should be just about the same gap either side so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back some of my faithful washi tape again and I will just anchor a couple of corners I will be holding it down with my hand but that should just give me a bit more of an anchor and I'm going to bring in that package of layering masks and I'm going to choose that floral background one and I'm going to use a blending brush Oops. and I'm going to use Sahara sand just a nice light colour for the background and I'm going to ink up my blending brush I'm just going to double check and make sure what's in shot here we go I'm going to swirl it on my ink pad and I'm going to come in and just use that blending brush over that mask and I can make that a bit darker in the middle by concentrating in the middle or if I wanted to I could make it dark around the edges and we can see that we've got that pretty pattern so I'll just pop my blending brush away and close up my ink pad 
And to clean your mask, you just need a, a damp cloth just to give that a wipe over. And let's see. And I can save this circle for other projects. I don't have to use it with a mask, I can use it just for blending. So I did, after all of that measuring, I could still have done with going over that way a bit. Um, so I could still use this for blending and using as a mask on other projects. So I can use the circle and I can just blend the ink and I'll get a circle. I can't see that on camera, I can see it here, but you get the idea. So I could use it as a circle to stamp over or you can use it in connection with a mask. Just pop that to one side. So the next thing I'm going to do is stamp my beautiful ranunculus flower. I think this is just such a gorgeous image. This is a distinctive stamp set which means that we get that really lovely detail from the rubber stamp. And I'm going to use the darkest brown that we have of ink and that's early espresso and I'm just going to tap 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 and ink up that stamp and I'm checking all the while once I've inked it up making sure that I've got good coverage and I'm just going to stamp that flower pretty much central it doesn't really matter whether you're central or slightly off to one side And that's just such gorgeous detail. I'm going to hold that up to the camera if I can. Let's just see what detail you can see. If I hold that still. You can see it's like an etched drawing. It's just such a lovely detailed image. So now we've got pretty much all of our pieces. That was quite a quick and simple um, card to stamp and to ink. So now we can work on just assembling and I need um, some baker's twine. Let me just have a look at where it is. It seems to have jumped out of my box. Just bear with me. Hmm. Baker's twine should be in the box. Oh, there it is, it's hiding. Here we go. So I'm going to use my baker's twine and I'm going to use this crumb cake colour, I think. I think that's the warmer of the neutrals. I could use linen thread. Linen thread's also really lovely natural. Let me just get linen thread and we'll have a look at that. So both pretty much much of a muchness. I really like this cotton baker's twine though at the moment. So I'm going to take, I want to go around twice. So I'm just going to take my biggest layer and just for measurement I want to tie my knot and bow to this side. So I'm going to start it at this side and hold it with my thumb. So if I allow myself this, the tail for tying my knot and bow, and then I go around once and twice and allow myself the same sort of length of tail. So I've got two tails to tie a knot and a bow and that's how I measure ribbon or twine and I know I've got enough. So now I can take that off and I'm going to just stick this layer Move that wet stamp out of the way. I'm going to stick my stamped layer onto my embossed layer and I'm going to use wet glue to do that so that I know that it will stick to that textured surface. Making sure I do a nice bead round, right round the edge and plenty in the middle. Plenty but not too much. We don't want lots oozing out of the sides. But because I'm, I'm adhering this to a textured surface, I want to make sure that I've got sufficient glue. I'm going to just give that some nice pressure. I'm always cautious because this ink may still not be dry. It should have dried, but I'm not going to give that a, a rub over. But just some pressure there. Now I want to actually tie the sentiment to this layer using this twine and I want to go through the actual holes in that pretty label so I'm going to actually thread that through and across the back and out of the other side. Oops. Now this cotton twine does want to unravel pretty easily, pretty readily. So now remember I want to tie it at this side 
So I'm just going to position that. I'm going to go around. Let's have a look. There's a bit of faff involved with this one, but it's worth it in the end. Oops. Just want to leave enough. That's right. So I want to go around. I want to go back through from the front to the back. Then out from the back. Oops. And around the back. So I can pull that tight around the back and now I can tie my two tails around this side. And my sentiment is still loose so I can position that where I want it. But before I do that I'm going to actually pull that tail around the front and I'm going to just tie a simple bow, knot and a bow. Nothing tricky, just a simple knot and a bow. tidy up these loose ends. Now I'm going to spend some time, once I've actually got this layer adhered to my card base, I'm going to spend a bit of time just tidying that bow up and I will anchor this sentiment down. But before I do any of that, I'm going to actually, because I've got my knot and my bow where I want them, I'm going to actually stick this to the base card. And again, I'm going to use wet glue for this. Because if I used a tape runner, I could use tear and tape if I wanted to use a dry glue. But I wouldn't use a tape runner glue. And what I mean by a tape runner is one of these, stamp and seal. Because of the pressure I'd need to press down on the embossed piece would flatten the embossing. And even though there's not too much of that embossing on show, it's just a really good rule to remember. So now I can spend a little bit of time faffing with this bow. So all I'm going to do is press my finger in the middle and just reduce the size of those loops. I'm going to just trim some of that bow, that those tails of that bow. And one thing I do like to do is I like to loosen these tails just again for added sort of texture and softness. So I just twizzle them in the opposite direction. And if they don't want to split too readily, you can take a, a pointed end tool without unraveling that end and just loosen them gently until you get the effect that you're looking for anyway. Now I'm going to take my fern leaf and I'm going to decide which pieces I want to actually use to decorate this. Um, and I'm actually going to use just a couple, just these two here. So I will reduce this. Now this one is actually attached to the stem. I'm just going to reduce that, snip that, and use that piece and reduce this. I'll just get rid of that little piece. And I'm simply going to stick those on top of the um, sentiment label. Before I do that, I'm going to take a glue dot, just one glue dot on the ends of my scissors, on the pointy end of my scissors. I'm just going to pop that underneath the label and give that a press down and that will stop my label then from moving too much. I'm going to, and you only need one. I'm going to take some um, wet glue. I think I'll start with this one actually, this chunky one. Pop this behind, see which way. And I'm just going to put a little dot of glue on the top and a little dot of glue on the bottom. And if you want to, if, it's, if you don't want to get um, gluey fingers, you can use a tweezer to help you with that. And I'm going to stick the stem and the leaf, just like so, and the same with the other leaf. Just 
just a couple of dots. My original card was being naughty. The glue, I don't think I put enough glue behind just to anchor that. Definitely had a mind of its own. It just wanted to spring up. And I really wanted those leaves to stick down to the base card. And we're going to finish that all off with some gems. And the gems we're going to use for this card are in the annual catalogue and they're called the From My Heart Faceted Gems. These were a carryover from last year's spring mini catalogue and they're lovely. They come, they are faceted, some of them are just upside down, and they're really sparkly. They've got like an um, sort of aurora borealis sort of coating so they really do catch the light and for this card I want to use those darker red ones and I'm just going to finish off I'm going to mimic the first card entirely and just put three dots of glue and I will pick out um, three gems. Now I'm going to take, use my take your pick tool with the putty end, just a little twist, allow some of that blue putty to come out of the end and that should allow me to pick up and those darker ones they look a bit red when they're in the in the tub but when you flip them over got two stuck together there let's get, let's free that up <laughs> come on behave There we go and that just finishes that off just a bit of sparkle so quite a simple card really but a little bit just a little bit of technique with the masking and to create that background and um, just some embossing and die cutting so there's enough technique but not too much that it's too difficult so that's card number one let me just have a look at my screen take a stand Let's have a look. No comments that I can see. And that's the big difference I'm finding between Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Is on Facebook when you make a comment, it does actually stay on the screen for me to glance at. So apologies if you have made any comments and I've not just caught them. But I will try and go back through after I've finished. Now, let's have a look at that second card that I'm going to show you. There's a little bit more detail involved. Let me just grab that original and just pop these two to one side. So this card has a little bit more technique. We've actually got some embossing with an embossing folder. And then the stamping technique on this label is a little bit more detailed. So, and again, I need some linen thread. So we'll just leave, I think I'll leave that linen thread there this time. We'll just tidy away. So for this card, the materials I've pre-cut and prepared are another base card in very vanilla thick card stock again. Again, just a normal size, half a sheet of A4 and scored at ten and a half. I've then cut a piece of uh, early espresso, that lovely rich dark brown. And this time I've made my layer a little bit slimmer. So I've gone for 14 centimetres by eight and a half. And you can see that that's a little bit slimmer than the regular first layer that I might use. And I'm going to actually emboss that using an embossing folder. Um, I want to add a paper lattice. And they seem to have run away as well. Where have my paper lattices gone? Well, there they are. <laughs> Hiding in the bottom of the box. So these paper lattices, they come in a pack of 10 and they're made from um, a craft, they're laser cut and they're made from a craft colour um, card stock. And you can see they're quite flexible and you can trim them down. So I am actually going to trim this one down. I didn't want it to be so square and angular, I wanted it to be softened so I'm going to trim that one down. 
I've also cut a piece of very vanilla cardstock for the label and that measures 12 centimetres by 7. Then I've cut a piece of that linen speciality paper, the same size, and this is self-adhesive, so I'm going to peel off the backing and adhere that to that layer, and we're going to um, die-cut a label out of those two pieces. I've got a little scrap of very vanilla on which I'm going to stamp these two um, pieces, and I've got a piece of gold cardstock, um, and I've got a scrap of soft suede cardstock and you will see what I'm going to do with that. I'm also going to embellish using a leaf from the ephemera, Expressions in Ink ephemera pack. Now I've taken mine out of the original wrapping and in this ephemera pack you get a sheet of really nice um, iridescent self-adhesive sequins and you get various sheets of these gold laser cut pieces and I'm going to take one of the leaf pieces actually I'm going to just try and find one I think this one here I'm going to use you can see I've used quite a lot of it and these packs just last for ages they really do they're really good value for money you get these label pieces that you can pop out and use, frame pieces. I'm going to use this leaf because it's got some sort of buds as well and I thought that was really lovely so I'm going to use that piece. And let's just try and pop all of that back in this bag. I've taken it out of its original cellophane bag because I just find it easier to pop back in a seal, a grip seal bag on the little bits and bobs. So I'm going to start by doing the label because that's the most work. So I'm going to pop all these other little bits to one side. I'm going to show you how I did the label. So I'm going to take my piece of very vanilla cardstock and my piece of linen speciality uh, paper and it's self-adhesive and I'm going to stick this piece on the top of that vanilla. We just peel off the backing it's quite thin and hopefully I'll be able to get that in position so maybe if I do it that way just so I don't poke my head in front of the camera and you can lift it off it's not quite as um, low tack as say washi tape but you can actually just if you get it stuck down, you can peel it back and, and reposition it. So you can see how easily that sticks. And you'll see now I've got that lovely sort of fabric effect. So it's just something a bit different. You might be able to see that on my original card, I'd actually stuck the linen speciality paper to um, basic white cardstock. So there might be just a slight difference. Then I decided to use a... Uh, very vanilla card base but there's only a very slight difference I've got a bit of extra sticky so I'm just going to tuck that round the back there just so it doesn't stick to everything and I'm going to make that into a tag using our tailor-made tags dies and this die set so useful I'm going to use the largest of the flat top dies so you get two different styles this nice scalloped top it's quite pretty and then a sort of a flat top, um, like a luggage tag. And I wanted that luggage tag look. You also get in the pack of dies, this little die with circles and this little die with, um, I don't know, sort of D shape. And that's the piece I'm going to use this scrap of soft suede. And I'm going to just make that reinforcement as if it was a luggage tag. I'm just going to pop everything out of the way to one side while again I bring back in the stamp and cut and emboss machine and the die cutting plate. So I need the platform, I need die cutting layer 2 and my cutting plate. And I'm going to run the tag through unstamped and I'm going to stamp it once it's been die cut. Now because this is a rectangle shape I'm going to position it just slightly on a diagonal angle 
and that just saves the dies because these sides are quite thin it saves the dies from sort of buckling with the rollers inside the machine and I'm going to use a little scrap of soft suede for that reinforcement pop the top plate on and wind the whole lot through you'll also find that I won't get such a clunk at the other side no clunk at all because of my rectangular die being slightly positioned on an angle now I'm left with three of those reinforcements and I only actually need one just pop the others in the scrap bin and if I bring this up to the camera you'll see now I've got this lovely luggage tag and I'm hoping that the camera can bring up that texture of that linen it just feels like a fabric, a piece of fabric. It's really lovely. Just something a bit different. And you can stamp straight on it. It's really lovely to stamp on. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to stamp the ranunculus again, but this time I'm going to make it two colours. So the first thing I need to do is clean off that early espresso ink just using simply chamois and I'm also going to use the other images from the stamp set I'm going to use this um, sort of it looks like a an old receipt <laughs> with shillings and things on and I'm going to use the postmark and I will be using this little tiny um, stamp here but I'm going to actually stick that on the top so the first thing I want to do is show you how to do that two colour for the ranunculus so I'm going to use stamp and write markers I'm sure I've done a demonstration with this before a few little bits on there and um, we're going to use the brush end of each so I'm going to use just jade and polished pink and the Stampin' Mike -right markers are actually our regular water-based dye ink, exactly the same ink as we have in our classic stamping pads. So they're water-based and we can use the flat, um, the brush end, but I'm going to hold it flat and I'm going to colour in the leaves. So I'm just going to brush that ink from the marker flat across the areas I want to colour. I'm not using it as if I was writing. I'm actually holding it nice and flat and just brushing that across those areas. Don't be afraid to turn your stamp around so you can get your hand at the right angle. Oh, I think there's a little tiny stem just up there. And I'm going to take the polished pink and I'm going to colour all over the flowers just again brushing that across there's no other way of describing this technique just simply brushing it across I think sometimes we forget that the markers are so versatile and we can use them in this way. Now because I've used two colours and the first colour was applied first, that ink could have started to dry on the stamp so I'm going to give it a huff. I need to just give it some pressure, not too much, not wiggling, nice steady even pressure but I'm actually allowing the ink to come into contact with that fabric um, speciality paper for a little bit longer than I would if it was ordinary paper just to make sure I get good coverage and now we've got that beautiful two um, two colour stamped image so really pretty and it's a really lovely um, technique to remember to use I'm going to take the other images and just build up that collage of images for that for that um, luggage tag. So I'm going to use very palest grey smoky slate for this 
sort of a script image if you like. I'm going to stamp it off onto my grid sheet just to see how pale it is and whether I think that that's the right grey. That's the grey I used on this one. So I'm using it full strength and I'm just going to stamp that somewhere near the bottom. Again, I'm just allowing that ink to come into contact with the linen um, paper just because it's more absorbent. It does actually behave like fabric. It's more absorbent. I'm going to use a crumb cake for the Eiffel Tower. Let's just have a look at that. Yeah, crumb cake for the Eiffel Tower postmark. I'm going to stamp that a couple of times. Once down there, and you can see we're building up a collage of images. It's one of my favourite styles of stamping is collage stamping, just building up that um, multiple imaged look. Now I felt when I originally did the first one, I felt that this area was a little bit naked and that's why I went for the ink splatters from Quiet Meadow stamp set. Now looking at my finish card, because I embellished it with a butterfly and this other piece, it doesn't look quite as naked as, as originally. So this is a stamp that you can omit to use. You can also use um, a stamp and write marker. Let's go for a neutral colour, something like um, grey granite, and you can actually do splatters yourself. You can actually pop the nib into the lid and make some splatters yourself. And that may, may or may not be coming out on camera. If I hold that steady, perhaps the camera can pick up those little speckles. Um, and that just takes away the sort of really open areas of the background. Now I am going to use Sahara sand and I will just ink just one corner of that stamp and just add a few speckles just to look like ink splats. Now it just takes away that kind of bareness or those really open areas and makes it look even more sort of vintage. I'm going to go back to my crumb cake ink and I'm going to use a sponge finger dauber and I'm going to give that whole tag an even more vintage look by daubing the edges with some ink. Really quickly just flick that sponge edge, sponge dauber around the edges and if you're going with a light touch to start with you can work on those areas if you wanted a much darker look you could go back to the corners and really work on that and again that gives that a softer more vintage style look to the whole tag so for my next piece I'm going to go to that little scrap of very vanilla and I'm going to take um, early espresso I think and the little tiny stamp I've got hello just as a sentiment and I have another stamp somewhere here we are it's just decided to jump out now this looks to me like some kind of ticket I'm not quite sure what it is in any case I'm going to stamp both of those on my piece of very vanilla just like so very simply I'm going to fussy cut them both Nothing tricky. They're only tiny. That's one. And for the hello, I'm going to go really simple and just give that a fussy cut. Let's just trim that down. Now, of course, if you wanted to turn either of um, the cards into birthday cards, I'm sure you've got sentiments in other stamp sets that you could bring in. Now, where's that sponge dauber gone? There'll be some ink left on the sponge dauber, and I'm going to just knock this colour back so it's not quite as bright and stark, just by using the 
residual ink that's left on the darber and just going around those edges and once again it just stops that vanilla card stock looking quite so stark it just kind of um, yeah makes it look a little bit more vintage I'm going to assemble this little reinforcement that we die cut I'm going to pop that onto the top of the tag and I will use some wet glue for that just a tiny amount and I'll probably just grab my tweezers for that piece because that's quite small there we go and that just finishes that tag and that's really pretty just on its own you could use that in scrapbooking or journaling um, you could use it just on the front of a note card without doing many more layers to be perfectly honest that looks really pretty just as it is um, I want to just tidy up a little bit, give myself plenty of room here, use those wet inky stamps because I've got one last little piece of die cutting, I'll just move these pieces to one side. Um, I need to die cut a butterfly from this gold card and again the butterfly comes from the meadow dies. There are two butterflies in the set. There's a half butterfly, which you can use to look as if it's sort of flying into a flower. And there's the full butterfly. And I'm just going to quickly die cut that one butterfly. I'd forgotten about that earlier. I could have run through at the same time as the tag. But hey, it's quick, in, quick and easy enough just to whiz that through the machine. Here we go. pretty gold butterfly there we are and now we can start to assemble oh no I've got one other piece I did need the machine goodness I need the machine back and I'm going to just emboss this layer here and for this piece I'm going to use the time one type embossing folder so once again I hold my embossing folder with the stamping up label towards me and open that up. Absolutely rubbish fingernails at the moment. And pop my piece inside. And with the hinge forward, pop the top plate on, plate number four. Again, we've just got some more text. It's all about textures and layers and, um, yeah, textures and vin that vintage look for this card. So I want as many textures as I can and I just think it builds up and looks lovely. Now, this Time One type embossing folder does actually have words on it, but to be honest, I don't really think anybody because it's not the focal point even if you got it upside down anybody would even notice there are a couple of words that i can pick out there's one here ever and i think there's one over to the other side we know something you can just about pick out a few letters but like i say it's not the focal point of your card so i would not worry if you use that embossing folder about which way up it should go now i'm going to reduce this trellis piece and I'm going to just go right round the sides and just trim off because I don't want that square edge I just don't want it to look square um, and angular I want it to be softer really easy just to trim And actually on my original card I really took my time and really trimmed down all the little pieces. So if you can see in here I went round and just took all those little notches out in the middle and got rid of all of that. Now one thing you could do 
is you could actually use some sandpaper to soften it even more. Oh, I like. I've opened that drawer there to get that sandpaper out and I've just spotted some sweeties that I've hidden in there. That's a bit distracting. So you could, if you wanted to, soften this whole trellis. You could use sandpaper. It's a really nice way of distressing the edges. If you want to make a, a vintage style card, you can distress the corners. You can go around the edges and start to soften them. It all depends on how distressed or vintage looking you want your project. Now for speed today I'm not going to go around and do all those little bits of snips. We've taken off those harsh square edges and sides. I might just tidy those corners up a little bit because they look a bit spidery. So let's just tidy those up and take those little bits off. But I think you get the idea in terms of this trellis work can be used in lots of different ways. In fact, I think um, in the packet somewhere, I've got a, a small snip here that I've used part on a project, previous project, and I've saved the other piece. So you can use it as... Um, you know, a layer underneath something, you could layer that up. It's really handy, it's really just something different, just something really different. Doesn't cost very much, something to add to your accessories. Now, I quite like this slightly on an angle. I thought that that really set off the tag. Once I layered the tag on top, I thought that that really set it off. Now, I'm just going to finish off my tag with a snip of ribbon. So I'm using the uh, Fine Art Ribbon, that's from the annual catalogue, and I just need a piece about that long. Not too much, it's lovely. Again, a, like a linen ribbon with that gold thread shot through, really pretty, and it just picks up that gold that we're using for the accessories and the um, finishing pieces and I'm going to tie that with some linen thread let's just pull a piece off and this can be a bit fiddly where you feel like you might need two pairs of hands and you just wrap that linen thread round and tie a knot and a bow at the front let's see Let me just move that out of the way and you can see what I'm doing. So just a knot, pull that nice and tight and a bow to finish off. And sometimes this thread does have a bit of a um, memory to it so it's a little bit wiggly. Then you can leave your bow as small or as big as you like. I quite like that. So that's the difference between linen thread that I've just used here and the cotton twine which I used on my original. So let's assemble. I'm going to stick my um, emboss layer down. I've got bits everywhere from that trellis. I'm going to stick my emboss layer to my card base. Oh, I think I'll just picked an old glue up there. Let's just see if there's any left. Here we go. And I'm just going to pop that on straight. No angles, just nice and straight. That corner's going to misbehave because that's where I started sanding. And I'm going to pop the trellis on on an angle. Now, to stick this trellis on, I know that I'm going to have my label in the middle. So I'm not going to even put any glue on the edges. I'm going to turn that over and I'm going to put some glue just on these pieces in the middle there. That's all I'm going to put on just to hold it in place. And then by sticking the tag on it will actually hold the rest of that trellis in place so sticky fingers so I'm going to pop the tag on using some dimensionals 
Now, I don't want to put a dimensional underneath this corner because I want to poke behind that fancy gold leaf. So I'm going to actually put it a bit further down. But on the other corners, I can put a dimensional. I always give them a squeeze down with my thumb and it helps the backing. If you don't have any nails or if you've got acrylic nails and you find it difficult to peel those backings off, always give them a squish with your thumb and that just helps. So I'm going to pop that label on, that tag, just on, again on a slightly, on an angle but on the opposite angle to the trellis. Now I'm going to pop my little gold leaf behind. See, see I can tuck that behind now because I didn't pop a dimensional up here. So now just a note of caution, I've touched that gold leaf with gluey thumbs so I've now got a smear of glue on that corner. I'm going to just take a damp cloth. Now I keep some damp, either a sponge, but actually I've got these lovely finger wipes. These were made for me by a local company. I'm just going to get their name somewhere. A business card somewhere, which I've just buried. Oh, here we are. Ickles, Ickle Sprites. This lady makes slow fashion for children. Um, so you can find them at icklesprites.com. It's fantastic. She makes a range of clothing for children that actually grows with the child. And she's done these wonderful sort of face wipes for kids instead of using wet wipes. And I thought, what a brilliant idea. I'll have some of those for my craft room. Now I'm going to take, and it's bamboo... Terry and she uses up just the scraps of her fabric. I'm just going to wipe that because our glue it's not water based but it should wipe off with water so I should be able to remove those sticky glue fingerprints. Just grab it's the little things isn't it? Grab a piece of kitchen towel. Let's see that's improved things a little bit and I'm just going to pop a smidge of glue behind, not too much, just on the base of that leaf. Pop that behind, but give it a press from the front, and that should help. And I'm going to, with my butterfly, I'm actually just going to crease the wings, and I'm only going to put the glue down the body, down the middle of the body, none on the wings. And I'm going to, oh, actually, I'm thinking now. Let me just pop that down a sec. I'm thinking because this is actually fabric that that glue will immediately have been soaked up. Yeah, and it won't stick. So let's just go with the glue dot instead. I seem to remember that from making the card originally. We'll go with the glue dot and we'll stick the butterfly on the front. And we will also stick our final two pieces just to finish off our little ticket. Not quite sure what that ticket is, but it's a ticket of some sort. And we'll use a glue dot for that one. And we'll just poke that underneath. The only reason I'm poking that underneath is just so it has a connection. Everything's grouped together and touching. And I'm going to stick my little hello as a sentiment, as a greeting, down the bottom of the tag. And I'm just going to use a little run of stamp and seal tape glue and I'll just pop that on the bottom of the tag and that gives me a sentiment so I can use this card I could use it as a birthday card and stamp happy birthday inside or simply write happy birthday inside or I could just use it as a quick hello card maybe a note card to a friend so that's our second card I'm just going to bring the first one back in and get rid of all this mess we can have a look at them side by side. So we've got, um, yeah, something quite sort of vintage looking and then something a bit fresher with the other one. Let me just see. Yes, they're both in shot. That's great. So, yeah, something quite vintage looking with a bit more technique, that two colour stamping and something quicker and easier and a bit fresher looking down here. So I hope that you've enjoyed my demonstration of the Ranunculus Romance stamp set today. And just remember this is from the January to June mini catalogue. So this will definitely be available until June of this year. 
um, and the meadow dyes are in the annual catalogue they're on special offer during march and they will only be i can only guarantee that they will definitely be available until the end of the annual catalogue we never know what's going to to make it to the next annual catalogue so if you really love these dies that i've used today um, and the tailor-made tag dies then please don't miss out on them before the end of the catalogue and that's everything from my demonstration i'm going to whiz the camera back round and just say a quick goodbye direct to camera so just bear with me while we just flip the camera Oop. Ah, yes, I'm back in the room. <laughs> so thank you very much once again for watching. If you've watched me live, thank you for joining me today. Let me see if I can get that camera straight. Look like I'm on a, an angle. Um, if you're watching me on Catch Up at all, then thank you for tuning in. I welcome any comments, any feedback, anything that I can either improve upon for your enjoyment for watching. Um, or anything that you've found useful then please drop me a comment below if you haven't already subscribed to my youtube channel then please do so and click the bell icon too because that will help you get notifications of when i go live or when i upload a new video thanks again for watching and enjoy your crafting whatever you make and if you follow me on social media facebook or instagram please do send me in messages um, pictures of your makes if I've inspired you in any way. I always love to see what great feedback um, it is for me to see what you've made if I've inspired you. So thanks again. Thank you. Bye for now. Keep crafting. <laughs>